This week, I caked one of my favorite childhood treats, a fruit cream cookie. I just have to remember how I made this cake. I made this cake weeks ago. It happens all the time. Once I make a cake, it's out of my mind. And now I'm looking at the cookie, trying to think about how I did it. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a cookie out and study it. Can I study a cookie too? Yes, please study a cookie, Orhan, but you have to come into frame. Oh, now it's just a weird hand. Not that your hand is weird. I mean, it's weird, <laughs> right? I baked three 12-inch round vanilla cakes. And my idea was one cake would be the bottom, one cake would be the top, and from one cake I'd cut these discs. And the first thing I did, of course, uh, level the cakes, remove the caramelization from the bottom. I didn't have to layer them because they're two solid cookies. I removed the caramelization from the side because I did slightly round the top of each cake, just ever so slightly. Now, with the third cake, I created a layer that was thin. I wanna say it was only like three quarters of an inch. And then I cut discs from that cake with circle cutters because I counted how many discs are on the cookie. Why do I forget now? It's a lot. Then I simple served all my cakes. So the two big rounds that would be the top and bottom of the cookie and then all the little discs. There is a version of this cookie in every culture. You yeah. said there's one in Turkey. We do. Shuchi said there's one in India. So please let me know what your jam-filled cookie is called. Leave a comment below and tell me what country you're from. And tell me what flavor the jam is, because that's what I really want. Now I have to layer these discs and sort of fan them around one of the cake layers, the big cake layers. So at first I thought I'd be able to cut each disc in half, but I can't because you actually see more than half of the circle. This is so small. I'm holding it up as if you can see it. So I had to fan them onto the cake, which was terrifying because when you cut cake that thin, three quarters of an inch, it, especially after you simple syrup it, it just wants to break. And I needed to make sure that I really displayed them evenly so they look like the top of this cookie. And then when that was done, I crumb coated both cakes. So now I just have two cakes. I have what will be the bottom cookie and then the top cookie with the fanned discs and there's nothing in the middle at the moment. When do I get to the jam? When should I work that in? Because I'm very happy with that. I made a raspberry gelée. Ooh la la! It was delicious. I pureed my own raspberries, and then you boil it with like sugar, gelatin, corn syrup. I'll put the recipe below, but you must make this in advance because it has to set. So once you know the center size of your cookie, you can actually use a round cutter as the ring, as the mold for your gelée. Basically boil this yummy mixture in a pot. It smells incredible. You have to boil it to a certain temperature. All the details will be below. And then what I did is I took a few of these rings and then what you have to do is lay this on a nonstick silicone mat. You have to make sure to grease the inside of the ring and also put parchment paper on the inside and grease that too because you don't want it to get stuck. I made three, I thought I'd get four, I got three. This is why I made the gelée at this point, because I needed to know the depth of the little valley in my cookie. Valley in my cookie sounds like it. It really, it also sounds kind of dirty. <laughs> Am I wrong? I always go there, we just cut it out. I wanted to make sure that it was the right height to fit in my cookie, because the jam does not stick out of the cookie, it lays perfectly inside the cookie. And I also knew it would be impossible to sort of like level the gelée, it's not a cake. And then what you have to do is put it aside to set. Get back to the cake. So I have my two cakes crumb coated, now I'm going to ice both cakes. That was not fun. I used small offset and small straight spatula. I had to ice every curve, the side of every curve. It, it took a long time. Pop them back in the fridge, and then I'm gonna take out my cookie colored fondant. You ate your cookie already? You can't study with me? Come, come get another subject. <laughs> you see how when you look at the cookie, I put on my glasses, like if it's sitting upright, you can actually see the top of the bottom cookie. Can you see that? So I didn't want to make this giant cake cookie and have you see cake there. So what I did is I rolled out my cookie colored fondant, draped it over the cake, smoothed it out, and I left the excess around the side. Then I laid a silicone mat on top of the cake, another cake board, flipped it over, and then I folded that excess fondant over the top because it, I don't need it to cover the whole cake. I just need about an inch worth so we see it from the side. And then I trimmed a perfect circle, and there you have it. 
Now I have to cover the top cookie with all these grooves. So it seems simple, but the hardest thing about covering a cake. Sorry, it doesn't seem simple. Oh, it doesn't? Okay, good, good. It shouldn't. <laughs> when you have a lot of grooves like that, there's opportunity for air to get trapped. Then what I did is because there's that valley for the jam, the gelée, I used a knife and cut it open. This way air can escape as I'm smoothing the fondant. I trimmed away the excess fondant from the sides and then I had to trim away the excess fondant from the center where the gelée is gonna go. If anyone is the heir to the Peak Freen's throne, feel free to tell me why there's grooves in the cookie. <laughs> I don't know, but I wanted to recreate them. I made marks at an equal distance all around the cake, and then I used the same sculpting tool to create these indents. Because even though they go all the way around the bottom, you're not gonna see the bottom of the cookie. So you just need to see it a bit on the yeah. side. I tried, and I'm not gonna lie, I made less. I was only off by a bit. I think there's technically four more lines. Don't tell the Peak Freen authorities. <laughs> I don't want a bunch of like British people to come knocking. <laughs> Peak Freens are British, right? What was driving me crazy is I wanted to cut it open because even though you can see grooves, you can't see the exact pattern because you can't see the whole cookie. So I tried to cut a couple open, got frustrated, and then I just made <laughs> like a, a pattern. I just made a pattern. So yeah, so the two cookies are great, however, they don't look baked, they don't look caramelized. So now I have to paint this cookie. From the start, I knew I would paint this cookie with cocoa and not even the Dutch processed cocoa that I bake with, that's way too dark. I used regular cocoa, like the kind you buy in the store to make hot chocolate. And then you wanna use a soft brush, like a makeup brush, soft bristles, and you wanna take some cocoa and then um, dust some off on the paper towel before you paint. Remember how I mentioned air with the ridges on the top? So there were air bubbles, so I used a pin to release the air. And the cake was smooth, but I could see those holes. So I had made a little bit of fondant paste and patched the holes, which is fine, except that the paste wasn't fully dry when I started to paint the cookie. So the cocoa became very dark where it touched the damp fondant paste, and then it looked like there were imperfections on top of the cookie, which I can't live with. So I made the decision to recover the, the top cake. No. Okay, I wasn't gonna pull the fondant off. That's, I'm not crazy, okay? But I was gonna roll the extra fondant I had super, super thin and drape it on top. But then you'll never believe what happened. A oh, miracle! Right. So I decided to wet the surface to make sure the fondant would stick in place. But as I started to brush water on, it was wiping the cocoa off. It's like it was a brand new canvas, you know what I mean? I made sure to let it dry completely and then I tried again with my cocoa and this time it worked and it looks fantastic. And while I waited, I worked on the gelée to prepare it, to put it inside the cookie. I carefully removed the rings from the gelées. I poured sugar on top, like I spoon sugar on top. After I coated each one in sugar, they were kind of starting to relax and become bigger. So I decided to- drama It's so much drama. So I decided to put them back in the ring mold and left it in there until I'm ready to place it into the cookie. I gotta say, I was even though I was in love with the idea of the gelée in the cookie, I was super nervous at this point because I can't put the gelée in till I'm done the cookie. If I put the gelée in first and I painted cocoa, I would get the gelée dirty with cocoa. If I finish the cookie and put the gelée in, which is what I decided to do, I run the risk of dropping it. They're like the, the encore. Now I'm gonna assemble the cookie. Because the cream in the cookie looks scalloped, I piped over each circle and pressed down until it was as wide as the indent I made. I decided to use my rich buttercream, which is a buttercream I make with whole eggs. And I love this buttercream because it has such a creamy color. And once I studied the cookie, I knew it was the perfect buttercream. You must drop the gelée into the cookie valley. It's, that was my assignment. At this point, I had my gelée still in the ring, and what I had to do is hold the board as close as I could. Again, I'm acting it out. Why am I doing a reenactment? Hold the board as close as I could to the center of the cake and slowly slide the ring over until it was in place and pull the ring up. And the gelée just fell beautifully into the valley. There you have it. So remember, leave a comment below 
Tell me if you have a cookie like this in your country. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm running out of cookie ideas. I'm gonna start making boring, like, digestive biscuits. And first of all, I like digestive biscuits, okay? I'm not slamming, especially if they're dipped in chocolate. There's probably a bunch of delicious cookies that are not available in Canada. Shoot me your ideas, send me a picture. If you think you have to send me a box of cookies, you can do that, we'll accept it. I'll try not to eat them all before I cake them. Okay guys, I'll see you next week. <laughs>